Major Lyons is back with us now. Major, this insight we're hearing from this Russian soldier who decided to resign to quit the war. Not only is he expressing this lack of understanding of why he was there in Ukraine initially, but he also expressed fear. He mm -hmm. expressed guilt about what was going on. And it really just sort of helps fill in the picture of what we're hearing from Western intelligence regarding the low morale and uh, the Russians feeling like they've suffered heavy losses. And then on top of that, you have more resistance becoming more public in Russia itself. Watch this. This was from a concert this weekend. So those were concert goers chanting F the war. I just wonder how significant is all this very public backlash or pushback against the Kremlin and its desired narrative about the war. Well, the Kremlin doesn't want this to get back. You saw Melissa talk about the Russian war machine, but it's proving to be an atrocity machine, given that we knew that they were going to commit war crimes at the strategic level. They were going to bomb civilians. They were going to go after non-military targets. But when you see this Russian officer come through with what he's saying, he's at the lowest line. He's, he's with the execution phase of what's going on there. You saw the, the, the trial of the sergeant that killed the civilian there. And, this, and, and there's more in the pipeline. There, the Ukraine prosecutor is going to bring more to bear here. And, and you, the, 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 the Russian soldier had an opportunity not to let this happen, right? We knew it was going to happen strategically. But once, you, I've been a soldier on the ground. When you're when you're face to face with the enemy on the ground, you can decide what you want to do. You can shoot them. There's no one around to watch you. Or you can do the right thing, capture, you know, c contain. They didn't do that. The Russian soldier didn't do that. Why? Because they were underfed. They were undernourished. They were not trained properly. All of the things that go into the poor morale of the military that that officer was talking about just came to bear. So, so the Russian war machine is a Russian atrocity machine. And yet Russia moves forward. They're continuing to hammer some of these cities and civilians in Russia in addition to fighting the Ukrainian forces. We heard from the former CIA director David Petraeus today on our air who, who said he believes Russia has actually claimed some momentum mm -hmm. here in this war. Do you agree with that? Well, they have numbers and they have material and that's the issue here. And that's what, again, dictators look, look at. They look at numbers and they say, well, I have more of these men and soldiers on the ground there than Ukraine has as well. We can pour in equipment from the West to try to equalize and use it combat multipliers, so to speak. But the calculation that the Russian general officers as well as Vladimir Putin makes is as long as he has numbers, if he moves forward an inch a day, it's still moving forward. Uh, again, the question is whether or not the Ukraine military can eventually push them back. They're, they're going to need soldiers. I saw a report about they're training now more reservists. They're going to need maybe 50 to 100,000 more. The, I just don't know if they have that many soldiers. I mean, here we are three months into this invasion, and I feel like there are so many of these little incremental pieces of reporting that we're getting about what's happening in the fighting. Do you feel like we have a good sense of what's happening on the ground? I do, and, and the fact that the Internet's up and we can see what's going on, the pictures that come back, there's no question that Russian equipment is getting destroyed. I like the fact that the M777 howitzers are, have got to the Donbass region. Think about the logistical challenge that took. So the equipment's getting there. Uh, the artillery war in place. Now you heard Secretary Austin talk about that, and that's the phase it, as it is right now. The question is how much of an advantage can that tip to the balance of the Ukraine to at least hold off? Let's say, you know, they could at least stop, create some kind of um, stag uh, stalemate there, keep the Russians mm -hmm. from coming. But then what, is the, what does a negotiated settlement look like? Do they want to give that land for peace, what we saw happen in the Middle East? I just don't think so. I think the Ukraine government is not going to go for that one bit. They're going to go all the way. In fact, a presidential advisor there in Ukraine said just that, that they do not want to have a ceasefire as a you know result of some kind of negotiation. If it means giving up territory, right. they aren't going to accept that. Thank you so much, Major Lyons. It's good to have you here.